I wanted to know what compelled you to pursue a career in manga. Uh, you, you mean uh, how I got influenced or how I got started? Uh, both. Okay. So actually, you know, my uh, big brother, uh, he is two, two years older than me. Right. Uh, he, he taught me how to, you know, depict manga when I was around 10. That's how, how it started. And, uh, but before that, I was really, you know, fond of, I was into reading manga myself. So, you know, the, uh, not, not only manga, but just, you know, ordinary books I, I loved to read. So I, I love reading, actually. And, uh, yeah, that's how it got started. Okay. Uh, I remember reading something that you were originally expected to become an architect. Uh, yes, actually, you know, the, I was forced to enroll such, you know, the, uh, how can I say, the vocational school, you know, the mm -hmm. f special school for, uh, uh, you know, the architecture. So, because uh, my grandfather was, uh, you know, carpenter, and my mother believed that I should be, you know, follow his, you know, step. But I didn't like that, because uh, I really wanted to enroll the design school, just like my big brother enrolled. Right. But my big brother was cheating, you know? I mean, uh, <laughs> you know that he said he needed tons of money for buying materials for his artworks, but actually he needed the money for, you know, the just uh, fooling around with the girls right. at the time. So my mother thought it would be, you know, so expensive or it would cost a lot to, you know, make me, you know, going to that kind of design school too. So that's why my mother said me that I should go to the, the such, you know, school for architecture. Right. But I didn't like that, you know, as I mentioned. So I just, uh, you know, run away from my hometown when I was around 16. That was Osaka to Tokyo, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I left Osaka and, uh, you know, came to Tokyo to be a professional when I was around 16. Okay. Yes, that's how. And I just got a job. So before I left my hometown, I wrote the letter to the professional manga artist who mm -hmm became my mentor but actually he was he was not the mentor he was kind of you know slave driver right instead so you know that that you uh, know studio was full of you know the uh slaveries you know the how can i say it uh, so many slaves mm -hmm. for doing uh, you know the tons of work you know 24 hours and uh, like a sweatshop know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, around the clock, you know, the eight days a week, you right. know, kind of things. Yeah. Wow. So after uh, I, you know, spent three, three years for that, and I got independent. So um, how were you approached to do uh, erotic manga, the hentai manga? Actually, you know, when I uh, quit, when I left such studio, I thought whether or not I should be a professional for you know the uh, uh boys manga or the manga for grown-ups right but i thought you know the manga artist mangaka for a uh, kid you know can't last long right because uh, you know that if i could was uh, a one hit one hit wonder was such kind of things they're always looking for the next big thing basically right yeah so basically you know just 10 years is the lifespan mm -hmm. as a, a, a manga artist for kid, But as a manga artist for grown-ups, I think at least 30 years, I could survive, I thought. So I had chosen to be a pro for grown-ups, you know, adult manga instead. Well, that's very cool. Um, yeah. You, you span over so many different genres like educational and political and... Yeah, it's you've done that in the past 
because uh you know the after i just began to do some uh, you know manga for grown ups as mm-hmm. the, you know the x rated or erotic right. manga uh the uh publisher for you know kids manga you know thought that i could be able to you know i was able to do some manga for kid because uh, the, they thought my you know the uh art style you know the would be adaptive right you know the changeable for, you know because uh, you know action kind of you know sequence i could draw or a- anything you know I- i'm uh, uh you know the kind of you know uh style for everything so they thought i could be the one for you know their manga and they offered me you know a different type of genre right and i i took it just a little by little you know after that educational uh you know the the manga publisher offered me some and uh, some you know covers of magazine and uh, the illustration for novels you know i got so just a little by little i you know i'm beginning to do some uh, various type of genre what would you say in in your own opinion made uh Urotsuki doji uh such a big hit as opposed to some of the things from your past mm, you know at the time uh the erotic manga was a cookie cutter type of manga so dopey so dull because uh, the main purpose for you know reading erotic manga is just uh, you know the how can i say that you get aroused for you know the, just, just for the sake uh, of getting know, spank, aroused yeah spanking your monkey or <laughs> you know, your chicken just like that right for right. you know the uh, teenage or you know young youngsters right right so <clears throat> storyline comes you know next and just erotic scene comes first right right so i thought it's always you no know, feel i i feel i felt that to create the storyline so me and um, uh, the editor in chief you know talked about it so we should create something new and uh, the tentacle thing might be a good way to how can I say it evasive uh, toward uh, the censorship Right. Because it's it's not a dick. It yeah. was not a dick. It was a tentacle thing. Right. So when, of course, you know that at the time it was a so, you know, strict censorship we had in Japan. Even now, you know, genitals or uh, you know any everything you know in, in your crotch is big no no to depict. But the tentacle thing is not a, a genital. It, it was okay. But uh, you know, human beings couldn't have you know such big you know the tentacle things. Right. So you, it, so it, it might be a you know creature or a monster, you know, out of space or uh, something. It might be okay to do such you know the tentacle things or several tentacle things. So that's you know why I just created the, the tentacle thing. Uh, are you working on anything now? Actually, you know, the after I had a car accident, I lost my ability as an artist to draw precisely. You know, amateur couldn't notice that. The me and another, you know, the editor noticed right. that I lost that. So, and I quit, you know, doing some manga for, you know, the weekly magazine or monthly because I, I couldn't do that. So I, you know, I was uh, searching the way to survive right after I spent four years to get rehab because, uh, you know, the, I couldn't move my right arm and, uh, you know, the fingers or uh, right hand voluntarily because uh, the, the rear tire of photon truck ran over me, my, mm. you know, whole right side. And I got, you know, para- I have my right side paralyzed totally. So it took four years and uh, not fully recovered, but uh, as uh, just an ordinary man, right now I can use a chopstick. So, uh, you know, even a brain golf I could do, but as an artist, you know, we need the subtleties to move oh, yeah. our f- fingers, right? Mm-hmm. So we have to distinguish 
the weight, you know, one gram or two gram, you know, grams or three grams to put the pressure on the paper mm -hmm. with your pen and the ink, you know, ink. But now I couldn't feel that. So, mm -hmm. but sketching is another story. So just sketching might be better now to do for me. So do you do that on a regular basis? Do you sketch? Yes, now I got an order when I, you know, go to the convention, like, uh, you know, Anime Expo or Big Wow in San Jose, I got, uh, you know, such order or, you know, sketches. So now I'm doing that for them. Well, I'm glad that you're still able to do something. <laughs> <laughs> now I can survive. Yeah. There's so many things I want to ask you. Uh, Anything. Shoot. Um, what was the first manga that you ever worked on? Can you remember? Uh, you mean a debut? Yeah, it, uh, your debut. It's just uh, you know comical, you know erotic manga. Not so erotic, but uh, you know comical manga for you know uh, you know other magazine. Just uh, action and uh, you know comical and uh, love romance. So I I don't know if this is if this is too much of a controversial question. Uh -huh, okay, so anything. But I know that uh, in Osaka, it's uh, yeah. the yakuza is very prevalent in Osaka. Yeah, 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 yeah. In in the Kansa, you know the uh, you know the west, you know western side of Japan, there are so many yakuza people there. Do you know of what connections or like what control that the yakuza had in the manga industry? Actually, you know, I did once, uh, you know, Yakuza manga myself. And, uh, you know, the, uh, why they were born, you know that? The basic, you know, idea, why they were born, Yakuza people. Uh, may maybe a little bit, but maybe you can uh, explain to me a little better. Oh, okay. Because, you know, that after the war, right? You know, they didn't, you know, uh, of course, you know, the, from... Edo era, mm -hmm. you know, more than 300 years ago, right. you know, they exist. But actually, you know, the Yakuza nowadays were born after the war because, uh, you know, basically uh, they didn't, you know, have a job because of their, you know, blood. You know, the in, you know, our region, so many untouchable people exist was a kind of, you know, a caste system in Japan. They, are, they were lowest, the lowest caste in, you know, Japanese society. Because, uh, you know, that like uh, India, mm -hmm. we had such a caste system for a long time. And uh, they were the lowest caste, so-called untouchable people. And uh, plus, they were, uh, you know, Korean Japanese. Mm -hmm. And the Korean Japanese were segregated before. Even now, they couldn't get, you know, good job. You know, the uh, major league, you know, A class, you know, the job they couldn't right. get. So, you know, and they became, they just, uh, you know, become such, you know, professional yakuza, you know, underground people, you know, dealing with, uh, you know, gambling or, uh, you know, the drugs or prostitution or anything and at the time japan was uh, in, you know so chaotic so police officers you know needed their help to control the civilians because uh, some you know the how can i say the chinese people were around to just uh, you know uh, break you know everything because uh, we were defeated by America and, uh, you know, China. So, China people came to Japan and, uh, you know, they stole something or everything. It was so chaotic at the time. So, you know, uh, Japanese police officers needed the Yakuza's help to take everything under control. That's how it started. So, but, uh, you know, the, this is kind of, you know, how can I say it, uh, you know, dirty truth. Right. The mostly Japanese people don't know about it, the, you know, history of Yakuza people. But uh, before the war, you know, Yakuza, uh, I think they had a moral issue. 
to be a I don't know you know that it's a little bit strange because uh, yakuza is just a yakuza right but uh, you know that before they had a moral issue as a professional yakuza don't hurt to the civilians right. or anything yeah they just got the money for the you know the gambling and uh, prostitution so you know the basically you know they don't they don't they didn't hurt the civilians actually yes so also uh after the war after the american occupation um uh, mm-hmm. it, it seems to me like the united states government more or less mm-hmm. started to feed the japanese people uh their pop culture and their uh tv shows so i, I was wondering since uh you were born just after the war, shortly after the war. Yeah, eight, eight years after the yeah. war. Yeah, kind of growing up. Was it like basically growing up under like an Americanized Japan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally, totally. You know, at that time, American government was so afraid of Russian you know, influence right. to Japan. Whether or not they just take, you know, try to take over Japan, you know? As their, you know, how can I say, it, uh, a soil sovereignty, and uh, so American government were trying to sell their, you know, TV show soapies mm-hmm. to influence Japanese people, and we, you know, the kids and the, you know parents were watching on, you know, the American soapies like uh, Bonanza or Combat or. Uh, uh, you know everything. You know the Riddle Rascals, or you know everything we watched, and we were brainwashed by American culture because on the TV show, you know so many, you know the fantastic, you know the gadget, or you know the how can vacuum cleaner, or microwave oven, or washing machine were there, and. Uh, you know, nice looking crew cut men appeared and, you know, fell in love with, uh, you know, the innocent, you know, the white blonde lady. Mm-hmm. So it was an idea life there. And we thought, wow, fantastic. American people, uh, uh, you know, overindulged themselves in, you know, spending their civilized life mm-hmm. compared with ours. We, you know, we were from, you know, poverty. We we are so poor, right? Nothing in our room, just, uh, you know, the light and uh, no fridge. Because just, uh, you know, how can I say, the wooden one, and they put the ice, you know, in it, that's all. So, you know, the poor we were. And we thought, wow, American culture is fantastic, is the number one over the world. And in our generation, we all, you know, loved it. American culture and the American TV show or English, you know what I mean. It's it's almost the exact opposite for me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I grew up with like more Japanese cartoons and Japanese themed uh, movies, and so it, it's always been kind of like my dream since I was like nine or ten years old to come to Japan. So it's kind of like swapping back and forth. Probably uh, when you were a kid, uh, Pokemon. No, nah, I was before. It. Well, that, uh, Pokemon was when I was in high school. So. Ah, is that right? Okay. Yeah. So it was probably more like uh, Voltron, which was Go Lion in Japan, and uh, like Robotech, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Uh, I see. Even, I see. Even Transformers, kind of. Ah, Transformer. Yeah. Uh, my, my friend, you know, that he's... Uh, Animator, he he did it Transformer a lot. Oh really? And also Ninja Turtle. You know Ninja the Turtles. people thought Ninja Turtle was American anime, but uh, we Japanese people did it mm-hmm. for them. There, there's a lot of Japanese referencing in Ninja Turtles. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I just interviewed their creator uh, a few weeks ago, but oh, uh, is that right? yeah, and I did, I would say that that actually assisted in my fascination with japan too uh-huh. but uh yeah then then once i got into uh japanese manga and anime like it changed my entire life like uh 
I think I was probably I was probably 10 or 11 years old when the local video store started carrying uh, the manga VHS tapes or from the company manga. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's the first time I was ever introduced to a woman's breast was was in an anime. And uh, Sorry? yeah, I think the first thing from you that I ever uh, came in contact with was La Blue Girl the uh, a anime and then uh subsequently i got into the manga oh it's uh, really funny but, and strange because when i was uh, under six, uh, 17 i just had an encounter with american comic strips oh really and and it was a golden age of american comic strips in uh, you know early 70s or the end of you know 60s so many you know the gifted artists you had at the time mm -hmm. neil neil adamos and bonnie no, Wrightson and uh, you know jill or gil kane we call it him and uh, so many talented gifted artists you had so i i was so influenced by such american comic strips and i modified that into japanese style mm -hmm. so i that's why i got popularity you know, amongst youngsters. That's that's kind of what I do with my art. Is like I take stuff that's more influenced uh, with Japanese style and then Americanize it. So <laughs> it's kind of opposite, right? I'll, I always draw girls with uh, really big eyes. And, I see. Yeah. What do you feel within yourself is the greatest work that you've done? I I thought it was a, a trap of blood. You know, it's a direct translation from a Japanese title, and because uh, uh, at the time, you know, the before that title, I I had been doing some uh, manga with uh, you know the storyline created by another you know writer, because uh, you know usually at the time you know like my art style of manga you know. Uh, had to spend a lot of time to create our own, you know, style because uh, it was a realistic uh, manga style, and it took so much time to create that. So usually we didn't have much time to read, you know, the ordinary books or novels. So that's why you know the another manga artists couldn't create their own, you know, storyline. Right. But uh, I could do that. So. You know, once I had a, a fight, argument with, uh, you know, the writer, the writer, that writer, particular writer, was uh, looking down, the, you know, another manga artist. They, he said manga artists were so stupid, <laughs> couldn't create the storyline because, because we were so idiotic. He said that, <laughs> right? Wow, you know, the, the really, you know, the... We were facing, you know, we were, you know, the drinking with another, you know, the editors and uh, in, in the party. He said so directly to me. <sighs> you know, manga artists are so stupid. He said, and and he was the one creating my storyline with my work. And I, I was, you know, I went ballistic. I was so furious about it. Oh, is that so? And I could create better storyline right. than you, yours i said and he said really oh try that give it a shot you know <laughs> he said okay oh uh, uh, let me try and uh, right right after that conversation i quit the there work with his uh, you know storyline and i just asked the editor-in-chief to you know start a new work with my own storyline and it got so you know popularity mm -hmm. it was the number one hit in that magazine wow compared with the, the you know the one with the hit storyline <laughs> that's one way to really uh to stick it to them as they say because i i believed myself that i could do that because before that, I, you know, read tons of, you know, the books because I was, or I am a bookworm right. myself. So is my wife. So, <laughs> so that's what, you know, 
That's why, you know, I'm proud of such a particular manga. That's great. Oh, I was going to ask you, do you know of anyone else that has your name tattooed on them? I know. <laughs> and I know so I'm the only one so, so far. I, I, I really appreciate that. Well, Thank you. Well, I, I love to, to pay homage to, to those who inspire me to continue to be an artist. That's it, it means a lot to me to have it there. Okay. And please say hi to your lovely wife. Oh, I will. She's so, she's so you know, beautiful, so charming. Oh, yeah, she is. I'm, I'm a lucky man, I will say that. Good. And you are also, you know, good-looking, uh, nice man. Thank You're you. You're so considerate and so nice. <laughs>